Hi, welcome back. Bass Monty's Garage Part 14B, where we get to install our lifters and set our valve lash. In 14A, we actually figured out our push rod height, and now we get to put it all together, and I'm going to show you the right way to do it, because this, there is a right and wrong way to put your lifters in and set your lash. So if you haven't done so, subscribe, and if you missed it, or you're new here, this is why we're here. Broke a lifter, had to take the engine out of the car, but along the way we were able to paint some parts and now we're here putting the engine back together, which is fun. So without further ado, let's get it on. All right guys, it's time to get our lifters ready for installation. And this is very, very important because instructions do not come with lifters for some reason. Uh, so as I mentioned before, I'm now going with Johnson lifters. Uh, Butler Performance highly recommended them. They cost a little more. Uh, I don't want to have the same Lunati issue, so I just pulled the trigger to do that. Now, when they come from the factory, they're obviously in cardboard, and they are lubricated, but they are lubricated with a rust preventative. And that rust preventative is sticky. It's sticky because it needs to stick to the metal. When you're manufacturing high carbon steel, it will oxidize extremely fast if you remove any of the oil. And who knows how long these need to stay on the shelf, so manufacturers coat them with rust preventative. Duh. Now, if you just throw these in the engine, you have a couple risks there. One is there's dirt and dust from the cardboard, there's dirt and dust from laying around, and that sticky oil can sometimes jam up the plunger that's in the lifter. So, how do we fix that? Well, we have to clean them. Uh, so, what I'm going to go through is what, what I typically do, but there's several different recipes. Uh, whatever parts cleaner you like to use, go for it. So what I'm going to do is use mineral spirits first. I'll, I'll probably soak them in there for, you don't have to soak them in there very long, but I like to have them soak a bit. Call it 15 minutes. Then I'll hit them with brake cleaner. And if they're going right in the engine, you just dip them in oil and put it right in the engine. If you're going to have them sit on your, um, on your workbench, hit them with WD-40 so they don't oxidize. Then when you're ready, you can put them in the engine. Oh, dip them in oil and put them in the engine. Okay, so that's the process. Hey guys, we're back. So I have all the valve train in. It's all it's all loose. I just put them on. Uh, you know, our, our push rods, the lifters are in, and it's now time to set valve lash. Now there's many ways to do it. And you can read about all the different ways online. I'm going to show you the best way to do it, at least the way I like to do it. When you set valve lash on an adjustable valve train like this, it's going to come with what's called a poly lock. These guys are basically a 5 8 inch nut with a set screw that goes to, up the middle of it. And you can get a special tool like this that's a wrench an allen key. The reason is when we set the lash, we're going to lock it down. Now when we're at the bottom of the stroke of the lobe, and where you do that is if you do, cannot see your camshaft and you're in your car, you're going to go one valve at a time. You're going to rotate the engine with the crank uh, and then watch, watch your lifter. So when your lifter goes to full extension and starts to come back, you know you're at the top of the lobe. Now you look at your harmonic balancer and you do one full turn of the crank. That will give you one half turn on the camshaft and you know you're on the back side of the cam. You're no longer on the lobe. That's when you set your lash. So let's assume we're there now and we're going to set our lash. The way you set your lash let me put my little nut on here. 
the way you set your lash is you feel for play in the push rod. So you guys can see that move. That's called lash. So I'm going to keep moving with my, my finger and I'm going to tighten the nut at the same time until I get to no movement, which is zero lash. Now there's another train of thinking that you should spin the rod until it stops spinning. That's a no-no. You've gone too far. You want zero lash. That's the rule. Now depending on your lifter, there is, um, the, the lifter manufacturer will tell you how much past zero lash you should, you should set this. So these lifters are one half turn. The reason it's one half turn, the thread that this is, that this is on has a 50 thousands lead. That means is every turn of the nut, the nut moves 50 thousands. So inside the lifter is a plunger. And that typically has a range of motion. And in this case, it's 50 thousandths. So if you do one full turn past the zero lash setting, you're now compressing that plunger all the way and it's not gonna do its job and you're gonna hurt something. So we're at, we're at zero lash. We take our, our magic tool here and we just go 180 degrees like that and now we tighten the set screw and when you get to that point you want to go another say call it a sixteenth of a turn so we're going to turn about that much and it's going to fully lock it in there we go that's how we set our lash so it is time consuming but you want to take your time just go right along the valve train. Don't worry about where you are. Watch for the motion of the rocker. When it starts to come back after being uh, fully open, you know to go one full turn on the crank. You'll be at the back side of the camshaft and you'll be ready to do your lash. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll fast forward through this whole thing. Sit back, relax. See you in a minute. All right, there we have it, guys. Valve lash is done. I hope you guys learned a lot today of how to do the valve lash correctly. And on to part 15. And I don't even know what that is yet. I've been, I'm so tired. So thanks again for hanging out. And you know the drill. Build them fast. Drive them faster. See ya.